ze kotoke makila na mono koruto sekile ne mana kotona jojo kolona mongro godozo kolo da brena kakali da baba baraga da bazo kolo da brana hatanange 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 Hatanange, Hatanange, Egebo Jacele de Brina Cacolo de Boza Kele de Bambre and Agangel and Mohotone Kelia. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that tonight we have this opportunity to fellowship in the light of your word. And we rejoice that your word comes with clarity tonight. Your people are built up and equipped. We fellowship in the light and we walk in the light and we rejoice that we have no occasion of stumbling. So tonight I decree that your people are built up, equipped, edified and Jesus is glorified. Nobody lives here the same way they came. We give you praise, glory and honor for answered prayer in Jesus precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. So say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody to 30 days of glory 2021. We are so excited to welcome every one of you watching by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, brothers and sisters. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service tonight. The Aquaibom State community connected right now by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We want to welcome every one of you to the service today. Do me the favor, call a friend, a loved one, a family member, somebody in the village, somebody in the local government, somebody in the capital city or the neighboring states. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. What a joy to welcome all of you to the service. Our social media brothers and sisters, let's get this one to the ends of the earth like we've always done. Share the video, put them on as many groups as possible. Join as many groups as possible. Let's lighten the dark places of the earth. Also put them on monogram, telegram, put them on WhatsApp groups. All our campuses around the world, we want to welcome all of you to the service tonight. Brothers and sisters, we're so excited to have all of you connected to the service. Get ready, it's going to be exciting tonight. Is anybody in the building excited about the service tonight? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout? Glory! Amen! Grab a pen and notebook your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight. Let's get into the word of his grace. Glory to God. Uh -uh -uh. All right, we're still examining the emphasis of the Holy Spirit in salvation. It's still Soteria, season 8. The emphasis of the Holy Spirit in salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Next verse. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. Unto the glory of God by us. The word promise I'm going to emphasize is a self-commitment. That is something God committed to do. If God makes a promise, there is no condition for the promise to be fulfilled. When God makes a promise, there is no condition for the promise to be fulfilled. What happens is that the recipient to whom the promise is made only receives the promise. He receives the promise. No condition to fulfill. There's only a promise to receive. Jesus is called the Amen. Amen means fulfilled. It means done. Amen means accomplished. Fulfilled, done, accomplished. So Jesus is the accomplishment of all of God's promises. Look at verse 21 and 22 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Next verse. Who hath also sealed us 
and giving the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. Now, that's the same thing, you know, Brother Paul wrote to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 15, verse number 8. Romans chapter 15, verse number 8. Now, I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So, here he calls all of God's promises that God has given us his spirit. That is the claim as the consummation of all of God's promises. That God has sealed us with his spirit. Now it is very important to know the reason why a man will be raptured. The reason why a man will be raptured. It's very important as we call it. You know the Bible doesn't use the word rapture. The word rapture is never found in the Bible. The entire Bible doesn't have such a word. But the Bible uses the word resurrection of the dead. Resurrection. But we use rapture for communication. Or we use resurrection for clarity or the immortality of the body. They are all saying the same thing. The immortality of the body, the resurrection of the body or what is commonly called rapture. You will discover that the reason for the rapture is not for the world to be destroyed. The reason for the rapture is redemption. The completion of redemption. God doesn't do something because of destruction. Rather, he does things because of redemption and salvation. So the reason for the rapture of the church is the resurrection of the physical body because Jesus paid for it. Somebody, one of the, one of the fathers in the country was trying to be uncharitable towards me. Went to a group of pastors and told them that I does not believe in rapture. That I don't preach it, I don't believe in it, I don't practice rapture. Wow, that's funny. Now, the resurrection of the dead is what we call the rapture of the church. Now, the Bible uses the word resurrection, like I said, because, you know, um, that is easier, that's theology. But for the purpose of communication, we use the word rapture. So, like we said, the reason for the rapture is the resurrection of the physical body. Because Jesus paid for it look at first corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 first corinthians chapter 6 verse number 20 for you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's you are bought with a price you are bought with a price so because jesus paid for the body the body will be redeemed but the body has not been redeemed. That's why it is called mortality. It has not yet been redeemed. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That you present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. Your body is a living sacrifice. You present your body a living sacrifice. It's been made a living sacrifice. So your body is a holy material to God. It is holy unto God. Your body is holy unto God because Jesus paid for it. So that body has been sealed with the Holy Spirit. The body has been sealed with the Holy Spirit. And because of that, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11. Romans, chapter 8, verse number 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That dwelleth in you. Because right now the body is called mortal. So the resurrection of the body. Or the resurrection of the dead. The body from the dead. Is what we call the rapture. So the rapture is the body. Being changed from mortality. To immortality. Now. It's not an escape route. From the problems of this world. Rapture is not we escaping. Rapture is not an SKP system for the church. Rather, it is the full redemption of what Jesus paid for. It is the full redemption of what Jesus paid for. 
We said basically that all of God's promises can be summarized in one word. He gave us his spirit. You can call salvation, God gave us his spirit. Can everybody say with me very loud, God gave me his spirit. The radio audience want to hear you. Therefore, I am saved. Say, I am saved. You are not going to be saved. The proof that you are saved is that God gave you his spirit. The, the giving of the spirit is a seal, is a proof, is the down payment that the believer is eternally saved. Are we in the building? The believer is eternally saved. So in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 20, 29, we see one of those promises that Jesus fulfilled. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29. <clears throat> Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Next verse. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. You notice that this was explained by brother Peter. This prophecy was explained by brother Peter after the event of Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2 verse 16. After the event of Acts chapter 2 verse 1, 2, 3 and 4. Brother Peter now explained it in Acts chapter 2 verse 16. Put it up for me. Acts chapter 2 verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. So two things were prominent in these verses. Number one, they shall prophesy speaking. They shall prophesy speaking. That is, there will be supernatural utterances. Along with the outpouring of the spirit, there will be supernatural utterances. Number two, they will see visions and dream dreams. Number one, speaking utterance. Number two, revelation. Revelation. The ability to see or a seeing ability. The first one is a speaking ability. The second one is a seeing ability. And all comes at salvation as the spirit of God regenerates a man. The speaking ability and the seeing ability. So everyone who has received the spirit is enabled to both speak and see. Everyone who has received the spirit is enabled to both speak and see. Are you still here? So we can be called supernatural speakers and supernatural seers. We can be called supernatural speakers and supernatural seers. So two things. First of all, there is speaking or trans. Secondly, there is revelation, visions, and dreams. Notice something. It says, they shall, they shall, they shall. That word, you shall, lets you know it's an act of your will. They shall. Your young men shall see. They shall. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. They shall. An act of your will. That's critical. Most of the times, a lot of teachings around spiritual things makes it look like God is imposing himself upon you. You know, so you begin to do things like that you didn't want to do. Mm, I didn't want to prophesy. God just forced me. I, I, I didn't want to speak in tongues. The spirit took over. Yay! I don't want to, but I cannot resist the spirit. And so it gives you that as if God is forcing people, but your young men shall see an act of your will. Is that Pastor Fred? An act of your will. Your old men shall dream. Your, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. They are an act of your will. God is not superimposing something on anybody. They shall, 
They shall means they will be the ones to prophesy. That is, they will be the ones to speak. They will be the ones to see. So you cannot prophesy and you cannot see visions against your will. You cannot prophesy and you cannot see visions against your will. It doesn't work like that. You cannot prophesy, you cannot see visions against your will. So whenever we talk about the gifts of the spirit, we need to realize that our human will or our cooperation is needed. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse number 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Look at verse 1 to 3. That is where many times, most of the times, that is where the church wall stays in verse 1, 2, and 3. They were together in one accord suddenly, 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 suddenly. I hear somebody is about to step into it suddenly. Somebody shouts suddenly. Marriage suddenly breakthrough suddenly your car is coming suddenly while you were knocking the door and it was not working but I hear suddenly but that's not what the voice is talking about buying cars suddenly build out suddenly that's not what that scripture is talking about the church wall just you know stays there and then fire clothing tongues as a fire fire yeah, 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 yeah. fire the church wall just stays between verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. Sound of a rushing mighty wind. Rushing Imagine the wind. The church just stays there. But when you look at verse 4, that is where we should pay attention. Verse 4, not 1, 2, 3. It says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's where the focus is. They were all filled. Verse 1 to 3 didn't talk about the Holy Ghost. It's verse 4 that talks about the Holy Ghost. If you see verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Question. Does verse 4 explain everything you need? Yes, it does. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak. The Spirit gave them utterance. Those are the things you need to function in that reality. If you have only verse 1 to 3, you will never speak in tongues. Because verse 1 to 3 doesn't have what you need. It just tells you the experiences that came along with the infilling of the Spirit. But verse 4 now gives you instructions. So verse there are some explanatory verses where you put your attention on when you read the Bible. Like when you read that Acts chapter 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4, where you should focus more on is verse 4. Verse 4. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Spirit gave utterance to who? Who? Today. They. Who are the day that the Spirit gave the utterance to? The disciples? Were they only the disciples? Okay, all the people that were there. So the Spirit gave them utterance, gave utterance to those that were in Solomon's porch. Okay? So he said they spoke as they were giving utterance. Who did they speak in? They. They, they did not speak to have utterance. They didn't speak to have utterance. They received utterance. That's why they spoke. So the utterance came before the speaking. They spoke because they were giving utterance. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. Pay attention. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The epistles, pay attention, the epistles explains the book of Acts. The book of Acts gives us a literal picture or a graphical picture of, of what the church was like. But the epistles explains that picture to us. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The word manifestation is given. Manifestation is given. They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave. The manifestation of the Spirit is given. 
They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave. So both in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and Acts chapter 2, verse 1, um, uh, chapter 2, verse 4, there is give and there is giving. Two words. The Spirit gave utterance, Acts 2, 4, 1 Corinthians 2, 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is giving. The word manifestation is never used in plural because manifestation does not happen twice. The word manifestation is never used in plural because manifestation only happens once. The manifestation of the spirit. The word manifestation simply means to unveil totally or to disclose totally. So he's saying the full disclosure of the spirit is given to every man. The full disclosure of the spirit is given to every man. Full disclosure will mean that the spirit was given without measure. <laughs> Full disclosure will mean that the spirit was given without measure. So with me, I have the spirit of God without measure. C can we say it like we have some gusto? I have the spirit of God without measure. I didn't hear a good amen. It's the same thing John said about Jesus in John 3.34. I did exegesis on that, but let's read it for the purpose of now. John 3.34, it says, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure. Unto him is not there. God giveth the spirit, God giveth not the spirit by measure. The spirit of God is given to every believer without measure. And is given to the believer once. The believer does not look for the spirit after salvation. It's called manifestation. It's given to every man. So in other words, for everyone who is born again, you have been given the manifestation of the spirit. Say with me, I'm born again. I have the full disclosure of the spirit. Can I hear you speak like you have some strength? I am born again. Therefore, I have the full disclosure of the spirit. I didn't hear a good amen. You will not require another experience. You will not need another one. Fill my cup, Lord. Get born again. Once you are born again, there is no cup to fill. The cup is overflowing. You will not require another experience because the manifestation, the full disclosure, the full availability of the spirit has been given. The full availability, the full disclosure of the spirit has been given. Listen carefully, listen carefully, listen carefully. There is no anointing that will be given you after you are saved. There is no anointing that will be given to you after you are saved. All the anointing you will ever need was given you at the point of salvation. You know, in the Pentecostal charismatic, we like anointing. There is no anointing that will be given you outside the manifestation. Because the manifestation of the spirit... The word manifestation is a Greek word phenoresis. Phenoresis means full disclosure. The full disclosure. When something is unveiled and there is nothing else to be revealed. Nothing else. So the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man that is born again. Now observe it says it's given. It's given. You did not get born again. It's given. Because Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 seems to appear like what was given on Pentecost was utterance. Then later on, revelation. Then later on, power gifts. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It wasn't instrumental. It wasn't given in faces. It was a full disclosure. An unveiling. A phenoresis or an apocalypsis. Full disclosure. The believer has the fullness of the spirit. And the spirit of God in the believer is without measure. So there's nothing more, more, more. No, you've got all. Glory. 
Glory. I say you've got all. You have all. I told me get the geshka. Oh, that go the geboza. Mental or the bubble. God does not give the spirit instrumentally. In Acts chapter 2 verse 4, it was specific. But you know, on the day of Pentecost, they saw visions. There were revelation gifts at that, at that day of Pentecost. In that Acts chapter 2 verse 1, 2, 3 and 4, there was all trance and there was revelation because they saw the clothing tongues. They saw. It wasn't a physical sight. It was revelation. There was utterance and there was revelation. There was tongues, there was interpretation equals to prophecy. And they saw. Now observe, observe, observe. That word gave them, the spirit gave them utterance or the manifestation of the spirit is given is a Greek word didomai. D-I-D-O-M-I. Didomai. From a root word doron. D-O-R-O-N. Didomai from doron. He means to offer unconditionally. To offer unconditionally. The root word deals with unconditional supply. Unconditional supply. The way it's used in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 is actually a compound word. Didomai. To give a full supply. So as the spirit gave utterance will be once. The utterance was given to the believer once. The day he got born again. That's the word didomai. So the word utterance is a compound word. And it, it has different shades of meaning. I will spell because I can't pronounce this, this Greek word. This Greek word can take off my tongue. It, and if you can pronounce, when I finish spelling, you can help me. Because some of you are more vast than I am in those things. A-P-O-P. A-P-O-P. Apop. <laughs> H-T-H-E H-T-H-E G-G-O-M-A-I G-G-O-M-A-I So I spell A-P-O-P-H T-H-E G-G-O-M-A-I One word Huh? I get a get ball. <laughs> It means a particular kind of speaking. A particular kind of speaking. So when it says, as the spirit gave them an unconditional supply of a particular kind of speaking. As the spirit gave them utterance. What it means is, as the spirit gave them a particular kind of speaking. So, as the spirit gave them an unconditional supply, gave didomai, unconditional supply, didomai, of an, of a particular kind of speaking. So there was an unconditional supply of a particular kind of speaking. Supply, unreserved, unconditional. For the believer to keep speaking a particular kind of speaking. I'm teaching good. Because these guys were not dumb. So that means that's nothing to do with whether the tongue was good or bad. He gave them a particular kind of speaking unconditionally. And that particular kind of speaking was as the spirit gave them. So they will be able to speak by the spirit a particular kind of speaking. So what precedes the tongues or the prophecy is actually the ability to do it. So before the tongues, before the prophecy was the ability to do it. They were given the ability. So that means it's not an event that happened on the day of Pentecost. It was a gift of an ability. You understand? It was not an event. It was not like, oh, something just happened that we cannot explain. No, it was an ability given, which means they can do it over and over and over anytime they want to do it because it was an ability. Like I have, you know, if I have no water in my house, okay, water from the water board. If I have no water in my house and then I need water and I go to water board and water board says, bring your buckets. We'll be able to give you some from our office. And they give me two buckets of water. I take the water back home. 
After using it, I will still come back to waterboard to get another two buckets. And then after a while, I'll still come back to waterboard. So my going to waterboard has no end. Fill my cup, Lord. <laughs> Something new in my life. But if waterboard brought the pipe, the pipe from waterboard into my house, the water keeps flowing when I want it. I open it, I close it when I want it. When the Holy Ghost came inside, the waterboard came inside. You don't have to be going with bucket of water to be collecting. You know, sometimes preachers will show you cup and they'll be pouring water. All that one is lack of understanding. The entire water board has been brought on your inside. And, the, and it's an unconditional supply of a special kind or of an unusual kind of speaking. And you can speak it anytime. You can wake up in the midnight. You can stand up in the afternoon and you can never exhaust the supply. The more you speak, the more it flows because there's more where it came from. Somebody's not shouting amen. amen. Say I have an unconditional supply of the spirit of God. I have the spirit without measure. Can I hear powerful amen? amen. So what we receive in the new birth is the ability to speak supernaturally. Not just an experience, but to speak supernaturally. That means everyone that is born again has the ability. Everyone that is born again has the ability. Everyone that is born again has the utterance. The spirit gave utterance. The spirit is God's gift and the utterance is with the spirit inside you. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 4. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. The word gift there is the word charisma. A faculty. A supernatural ability. Something that has become your property. Charisma. Something, an endowment that is yours. I was not taught this when I got born again. Nobody taught me this. After I got born again, see us fasting and praying for the spirit. And every time we speak, is an experience. We call it encounter. Then we now want another encounter. Then we want another encounter. And those days, these songs didn't help us much. You know, fill my cup, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come. Sweet spirit, I pray gently. Gently. Come in your strength. Shh. Easy. If a child does, shh, get that child out. The Holy Ghost doesn't need disturbance. We are given the picture of what does not exist. As the Holy Spirit. And we kept seeking experiences. Meanwhile we had the entire deposit. Glory to God. Glory to God. And of course we used to be told. We have to create the atmosphere. For the spirit to come. There has to be an atmosphere. Then you close your eyes. Because the spirit doesn't come on people whose eyes are open. But what happened to us when we got born again was not an experience. It was an ability. It wasn't an experience. It was an ability. That is, there is an unconditional gift of utterances to me. Can I hear you say very loud? I have an unconditional supply of utterance in me. So it's not just an experience, it's an unconditional supply. So we are, not, we are going to learn something about that in this service right now. That means the Holy Spirit gave the ability to speak supernaturally. I'm going to learn the things of the Spirit. There's something to learn about utterances that helps us to understand the gifts of the Spirit generally. Something to learn about utterances. 
Now notice what happens in the demonstration of the gifts of the spirit. In Acts chapter 2, you know, from verse 1 to 3, it talks about one accord, one place, suddenly rushing mighty wind, clothing tongues as of fire. Verse 4. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Question. When they were speaking, was their mouth open or closed? Huh? Their mouth was open. Open your mouth. Everybody, open your mouth. Open your mouth. So if your mouth is not in that position, you cannot speak. Okay, close your mouth. Close your mouth. Close your mouth and keep it closed. Talk to me. Hmm? That is, hmm. Open your mouth now. Talk to me. So you cannot speak in tongues with a closed mouth. You can only speak with tongues when your mouth is open. That means you need to do this for the utterance to flow. You need to open your mouth for the utterance to flow. They began. Was it the Holy Ghost who began or the people? The people. Okay, everybody say something. Say something. Let the people hear you at home. That means right now you have begun to say something. That means their tongue was involved on the day of Pentecost. Their tongue was involved and their lips were involved. Their tongue was involved and their lips was, were involved also. Glory to God. They just began to speak. That means there's a special role you play to speak. If you're going to speak, you have to do this speaking. You have to do the speaking. The spirit will not speak for you. You will speak. So we began to say things of the spirit. They happen through the human body. Things of the spirit happens through the human body. Things of the spirit do not happen in isolation of the human body. Actually, they happen in the human body. And there's a cooperation of actions taken in and through the human body. You will need to take your steps. Things will not be imposed on you. You will need to take your steps. You will need to take your steps. So I must actually allow the gifts of the spirit. When you hear the word is to give you information. Every time I teach you. Hearing me teach you is to give you information of what is already resident inside you. Information of the resident ability within. That's why I teach that's why Paul said, I will not have you ignorant. Because when you hear the word, the word gives you the ability to allow what is inside to function. The knowledge of God's word shows you what you carry, so you allow it to function. So the gifts of the spirit are in the spirit. In the spirit. How I many of you have the Holy Ghost in you? If you have the Holy Ghost, you wave your hands and shout, I have the Holy Ghost. Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the Holy Ghost? In you, in your body? In you, in your body? Wait, wait. Is the Holy Ghost in you, in your body? So when you say the Spirit in you, your physical body is part of it. That means the Holy Ghost in you walks through your physical body. He walks through your physical body. So the word in the spirit will refer to my physical body. When I say I am in the spirit, it is an activity going on in my physical body. In the spirit. I can't be in the spirit without my body. <laughs> So, when I am in the spirit, it's not a transportation. It's not astral travel. I am not leaving my body to go somewhere. No. When I am in the spirit, I am within my physical body. 
1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. Am I teaching good? 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries? How be it where? How be it where? So when he's speaking in tongues, does his tongue move? What about his lips? His lips, do they move? So there is a participation of the human body in the operation of the spirit. The tongue will move. The lips will move. So when I am in the spirit, is my body involved? Huh? Four times Brother Paul used the word in the spirit. First Corinthians 14, 14. Let's look at it. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. For if I pray in tongue, in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. My what? My spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Question. Look at me, everybody. Can your spirit pray without your mouth? Huh? Okay, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Stop. Pray. Stop. Pray. Is your mouth involved? Is your tongue involved? Yes, because the things of the spirit are within and they operate via the human body. Your body can't operate in isolation with the spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 15. So number one, pray. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Next verse. How is it then, brethren? Okay, else, when thou shalt bless with what? With the spirit. How shall he that occupy the realm of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of tongues? Seeing he understanding of what thou sayest. Notice that the activity is mine. But the ability was given to me. The activity is mine. But the ability was given to me. Is it getting clear? So that means I play a role. In fact, an active responsibility in the function of the gifts of the spirit in my life. I play an active role in the function of the gifts of the spirit in my life. So the gifts are abilities. An unconditional supply given by God resident in me. An unconditional supply given by God resident in me. So when I am hearing the word of God, what happens? What happens within is that an awareness, a consciousness, an acknowledging of what is inside dawns in my mind. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 6. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So the operations will differ. The operations will differ. But it's the same God that worketh all in all. So I must first of all know that the activities of the Spirit are resident within me. The activities of the spirit are resident within me. That is in my physical body. I will not do astral travel. I will not need a unique experience to function in the things of the spirit because God has given me an unconditional supply. Are we here? God has given me what? An unconditional supply of the things of the spirit. Now, so 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Hallelujah. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Another translation puts it like this. I will not have you in the dark. I will not have you in the dark. The word ignorant is the word adinodine. I can spell. A-D-I-N-O-D-E-I-N. A-D-I-N-O-D-E-I-N. A failure to recognize. That word ignorance there, ignorant there means a failure to
to recognize. So Paul was not imparting abilities. He was only letting them recognize the abilities. Hello? Hello? Paul was not imparting abilities. He was only letting them recognize the abilities. To recognize something. To know how it happens. To recognize. That means the Holy Ghost will be moving and you won't know. You can have the Holy Ghost. He is doing a lot of things inside you, but you are not aware of. Because you are in the dark. Because you have not been taught. Because you have what we call a failure to recognize. So brother Paul says, I will not leave you unable to recognize. Concerning the things of the spirit, I will not have you unable to recognize. Then brother Paul says, therefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking, I give you to understand because I won't leave you in the dark. So I give you to understand. One thing about teaching is that teaching helps you to understand. Teaching helps you to comprehend. Teaching does not impart the ability. But teaching helps you to recognize the ability. As I'm teaching you right now, suddenly you begin to prophesy. It was not the teaching that made you prophesy. The only thing is that the teaching helped you to recognize that there was prophecy inside. Hallelujah. Teaching makes you understand your ability. Teaching helps you to recognize the ability you carry. Everything that brother Paul was teaching was focused on verse 5 and 6 of that Corinthians. First Corinthians 12. Look at verse 5 and 6. That was all the focus of his explanation. Verse 5 and 6. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 6. There are diversities of operations, but it is God, the same God, which worketh all and in all. The ministries of the gifts of the spirit and their operations is what Paul was teaching. The ministries and their operation. This particular church in Corinth knew what the gifts of the spirit were. They knew it. It was not a new thing. So brother Paul focused on, on the where and the how. The where and the how of the operation. Because they already had in 1 Corinthians 1 7, he said to them, You come not behind. 1 Corinthians 1 7. So that you come behind in no gift. That is, you have the gifts. All of you are operating the gifts. But what Brother Paul was teaching them was the operation and the ministries of the gifts. He was to recognize how they were working. So, Brother Paul's issue with the church at Corinth was to recognize how the gifts work and why the gifts work. How they work and why they work. Why gifts of the Spirit and how do they operate. But you know, there are places you will go to preach and the problem is everything. They don't know the what, the where, and the how. They're in the dark. For example, Acts chapter 4. Somebody will get angry. What is he trying to say? So it is now us, not God. So we are the ones now talking, not God. They began. It wasn't God who began to speak. So such a person who has not followed the series from the beginning will get confused. Because you will wonder why we are talking in tongues and stopping when we want and start when we want. Huh? How can you just talk in here? Huh? So right now, you just, you stop. Akaba, you stop. Le Krodos, you stop. Agabaha, you stop. Hey, Jagamo. So you are the one in command. If you gave me the gift of a phone, won't I use it when I want? And keep it when I want. Is it not my phone? 
Is it your own? It has my name. If you need your own, go and buy your own. The gift is mine. And it's an unconditional supply. I can turn it on when I want. I can turn it off when I want. I carry it. It's my property. Glory to God. I say 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 glory to God. All the gifts, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, they are mine. Hey, somebody shout, tongues are mine. Interpretation of tongues are mine. The gift of healing belongs to me. The working of miracle is mine. The gift of faith belongs to me. Designing of spirits belongs to me. Word of knowledge is mine. Word of wisdom is mine. All the gifts are mine. I didn't hear powerful, amen. They are mine. Nemo nananos. Nengro dozaka lato. Pato They are mine. You know, people who believe that they gave their life to Christ can never understand eternal salvation. Never. What did I say? Repeat what I said before you say never. <laughs> no, repeat what I said before I said never. Want to go? So anybody you see falling on top of eternal salvation is because he gave Christ his life. Those of us whom Christ gave his life to us, we have eternal salvation. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Because you are the one who gave Christ. That's why you can lose it. But when Christ who is shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. Somebody shout eternal. Tell your neighbor, I didn't give Christ my life. <laughs> I have no life. Christ gave me his life. And his life is eternal. Glory! I tell you, brother, that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. The reason why he doesn't know that salvation is eternal is because he doesn't know that salvation is God's property. So if you tell him that salvation is eternal, he will say, how? Because he gave Christ his life. He can take it when he wants. He can be given and collected. After all, you lose salvation many times a day. <laughs> leave that side. Leave that side. <laughs> That's why if you're a teacher of the word, you must learn to be patient. Don't be in a hurry because doctrine takes time. You must be patient. Spiritual growth is not a sprint race. It is a marathon. You keep growing. It's something you do all the days of your life. Brother Paul taught the church in calling the gifts of the spirit. Then he came back again to teach them the how and the why. Labor. Paul uses some key words in his, in his writings. He uses the word edification. Edification. Edification many times. In 1 Corinthians 14.3, edification. 1 Corinthians 14.17, edification. 1 Corinthians 17, I mean 14.5, edify. 14.26, edify. And the list goes on and on. He explains what the gifts of the spirit are. They are to build people up. Gifts of the spirit are for building, not for pulling down. The gifts of the spirit do not tear down. The gifts of the spirit inspire. They build. The gifts of the spirit exhort. The gifts of the spirit comfort. They don't discourage. The gifts of the spirit add. They don't take away. He also mentions some key words like peace. In 1 Corinthians 14.33. 1 Corinthians 14.33. Put it up for me. For God is not the author of confusion. But of peace. So when the gifts of the spirit are in operation. There will be peace. Anywhere there is gift of the spirit. And there is no peace. Something is not right. 1 Corinthians 14, 29. 
Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. So in the operation of the gifts of revelation, you must judge. We judge the gifts of revelation. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the zoning of spirits, we must judge. Let the prophet speak one or two and let the other judge. We judge the gifts of revelation. So if you're sitting and somebody is bringing a revelation, you judge it. Because the essence of all the gifts is to edify. So how does a man of God predicting football edify the church? So that already tells you that's not it. How does a man of God predicting who will win election edify the church? So it tells you the man is doing extracurricular activities. God has set some in the church for the edification of the church. The gifts of the spirit are supposed to build believers, equip believers, empower believers to do the works of Jesus. You are not supposed to tear down. So you judge revelation gifts. We have three classifications. Ultrans, revelation, and power. We've been through ultrans. We are right now on revelation gifts. We talked about a word of knowledge. Not the word, you remember? Not the word, a word of knowledge. Because it's an account of things. A word of knowledge. is an account of things, an account of places, an account of people, an account of events. Which are in the past or the present. That's a word of knowledge. An account of things, places, people, events. Which are in the past or in the present. Because a word of knowledge is a word gnosis. Knowledge. Gnosis. Which reveals to you a fact. Whether in the past or present. A word of knowledge functions many times when you pray for the sick. When you minister to the sick. A word of knowledge helps you to be more effective in ministering to the sick. It is not the word of knowledge that will heal. The word of knowledge will only give you a fact. A word of knowledge will only show you what the matter is or give you an idea. But after that, you have to know what to do with that idea. Of course, when it has to do with the sick, what did Jesus say you should do with the sick? Lay hands on them. So, when, when a word of knowledge gives you an idea, you don't have to wait for uh, another. You just lay hands and rebuke whatever it is. A word of knowledge gives you a fact. So, you can boldly lay hands on the sick and minister to them. Of course, you can also ask the people who came out for prayer to be healed, what's the matter? There's nothing wrong in asking people to tell you what the matter is. Many times, because we have a crowd, you know, we have some specific people we want to lay hands on. For example, we could say, okay, if you, have, if you have problem with your right ear, come out. If you have problem with a growth, you have a growth on your body, come out specific. Because we have crowd, and the crowd is too much. So by the gift of the Spirit, we discern things that we can minister to specifically. And all that will be by the gifts of the Spirit. You're able to see in. You're able to know. You're able to have a knowing of what's going on. Sometimes in calling out a word of knowledge, you make the recipient recognize that he's being healed right now. A lady in London in our campus, you know, you, I'm sure all of you remember the testimony, who had the leg problem and she was on crutches and couldn't walk. And her campus people we're expecting her to come to service on crutches. But that Sunday morning, I came up to the pulpit here first service. And I said, there's somebody right now, you're on crutches. The power of God has just healed you. You can move without the crutches. And she walked without the crutches and went to service. Now, that, that word of knowledge revealed a healing that has already taken place that she was not aware of. What has happened or what is happening? When I said it, I, I, I gave her a word of knowledge to help her realize that she's already healed. And when she stood up, she discovered, yes, she was. She could, have, she could have still been carrying the crutches. 
thinking it is still, they are not knowing she's been healed. There are people that are still carrying their medical conditions, not knowing that they've been healed already. So what the word of knowledge does is to bring a fact that opens up what has already taken place. I don't know if I'm communicating at all. So the word of knowledge gets the attention of the recipient to acknowledge. The attention of the recipient to acknowledge the healing. Or a word of knowledge helps the minister to know what to minister. In Mark chapter 5, there was a woman with the issue of blood. This woman was sick. Jesus didn't know that the woman was going to touch him. He was on his way to Jairus. On his way to Jairus' house, the woman came from behind and touched his clothes. And then he stopped. Somebody touched me. I, I knew when virtue left my body. I knew it. So, let me ask all of you a question. Jesus and the woman with the issue of blood, who first knew something has happened? Huh? Jesus, because he's out of his body, it went. So, before it got to our body, it left Jesus' body first. So, that's why we're ministering sometimes, and the power of God moves through you to heal, you know that something is happening. You will know it. I mean, it's, it's happened many times. And so at that time, you announce somebody right now is being healed of this. Somebody right now has just been healed of migraine headaches. Somebody right now has just been healed of a spinal pain. Somebody right now has just been healed of a leg pain. There's somebody here, you're having a complication in your intestinal system. Healing has just happened right now. You're calling out the miracles because the power of God moved out through your ministry and things are happening. And you're announcing what is happening or announcing what has already happened. And the people that have that situation are recognizing by your announcement that it is me you're talking about. So what happens? They take a step and walk in the reality of what has happened. So word of knowledge helps the minister to minister healing and to minister in the things of the spirit. Am I teaching here? A word of knowledge. A word of knowledge. Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? Power left my body. Somebody touched me. So he knew someone got healed. Sometimes I'm teaching and then all of a sudden I have a pain. I have a pain I didn't have. I know that there's somebody in that service that has that pain. So what do I do? I said there's somebody here with a pain on your shoulder. In the name of Jesus you are healed right now. And the moment you receive the healing my pain goes your own goes. It's an operation of the spirit. Are we teaching here? If I catch you, shout, I hear you. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's, there's going to be a lot of these manifestations. Yeah, they're, go, they're going to be, hey, Kebo Shagai, they're going to be lots of these manifestations in your life. Because you are coming into an acknowledging of the mighty, mighty deposit of God's abilities on your inside. Yeah, you will see it happen. You will walk in the reality of it. You will know it. You will know it. You will even know it when doctors diagnose somebody wrong. Doctors tell somebody this is your condition. But by word of knowledge you can diagnose the person accurately. And your diagnosis can negate what the doctors diagnosed. Because most times the doctors are doing trial. You are not doing trial. You are speaking specifics. Am I teaching here? Say I have revelation. I have accuracy. I have precision by the spirit of God. I didn't hear a good amen. I didn't hear a good amen. I didn't hear a good amen. So a word of knowledge can be a word of knowledge about gifts of healing. You can have a word of knowledge about gifts of healing. You can have a word of knowledge about gifts of healings happening in a meeting. You can also have a word of knowledge to recognize the gifts of healing operating in a meeting through you. So the word, or a word of knowledge helps you to minister. Look at Acts 9.34, brother Paul. Acts chapter 9 verse 34. 
Acts 9.34. And as he journeyed, Acts chapter 9 verse 34. And Peter, sorry, brother Peter said unto Aeneas, Jesus Christ make thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. 35. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. They saw him and did what? They turned to the, that's a word of knowledge. Brother Peter recognized gifts of healing in operation. So, a word of knowledge can recognize another gift of the spirit in operation. A word of knowledge can recognize another gift of the spirit in operation. So, we can be in service. The other day it happened. And I walked to Pastor Prince. And I said, Pastor Prince, come, you have a word for this service. Boom! The word of prophecy came. I walked to Pastor Uko, Dr. Gabriel, all of them. What? The word of knowledge told me that there was something they carried that belongs to this service. And bam, 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 bam. It came without thinking. Accurate. It wasn't planned. I didn't call them and they come out and say, um, Kado Baba Baba. Kado Baba Baba. What shall I say now? Kado Baba. Uh -uh. When I, when, when the word of knowledge came to me, the utterance was already in their hearts, ready to flow out. Are we teaching here? Yeah. So, a word of knowledge can identify another gift of the spirit in operation. It could be prophecy. It could be healing in the service. And it could be a working of miracles. Word of knowledge is you having the fact or a fact concerning what's going on. A knowing. A knowing. So the revelation gifts can also recognize another gift of the spirit. Working in a meeting or walking through another minister. A word of knowledge can recognize another gift. Now, when you have a word of knowledge about someone that is sick, the next thing is for you to know what to do. You can have a word of knowledge, but you don't know what to do. You can have a word of knowledge... A word of knowledge doesn't give you instructions. It only gives you information. A word of knowledge doesn't give you instruction. It only gives you information. So you have to know what to do with the information. For example, John chapter 4 verse 16. Jesus and the woman at the well. Jesus said unto her, look at this. I love Jesus. I tell you I love Jesus. Look at the way, look at the way he operated his word of knowledge. Go call thy husband. He already knows she doesn't have. <laughs> Go call your husband and come with him. Next verse. Next verse. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have well spoken. You have spoken well. You really don't have a husband. Next verse. For that was five husbands. And the one you are living with now is not your husband. You spoke the truth. <laughs> did you see the way he went about it he didn't say you have no husband he said go and bring your husband that's wisdom she now said I have no husband he allowed her to say it he allowed her to say it so there is wisdom in the oppression of the gifts of the spirit Maturity is critical. He reveals something to her that she knows. And if you observe, after that, Jesus now used that to teach her the word. The gifts of the spirit are not for advertising a man of God. They are to glorify Jesus. They are not to advertise us. See, a man of God will, will operate gifts of the Spirit and he will stand there and allow people to be lying down and worshipping him. It tells you who is in charge. There's a wrong spirit somewhere. In Acts chapter 5, in the case of Ananias and what? 
Safira. Peter knew it. He said, you and your wife, you have lied. You have lied. That's word of knowledge. You and your wife, you lied. That thing you say you sold, that's not what you sold for. You lied. You lied. The word of knowledge there is the information about the lie. Then it is now left for Peter to decide how to handle it. It was not the spirit that told Peter to kill them. It was Peter's lack of wisdom and maturity that now malhandle the spiritual information. Are we teaching? So he gives you information, but he doesn't tell you what to do. You have to know what to do. That's a word of knowledge. Peter just wiped them out. Say, ah, you, 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 think, you, you think we're joking here? You think we're joking here? I've been fasting for 40 days and you stand before me and you lie? I'm not Peter. It's Holy Ghost you are lying against. You are dead. Boom. Safi. Safi. See where they drag your husband. They are dragging you now. Boom. Peter said, don't joke with us. Don't joke with us. Bible said the whole city ran away from them and nobody joined the church. Nobody joined the church. If it is God at work, people will join the church. Because it was not God at work, people ran away. The gifts bring people. They don't drive away people. So, the word of knowledge was accurate, but Peter's handling of the situation was immature. Because later on, when Simon Magus, how many of you remember Simon Magus? How many of you remember Simon Magus? He brought money to buy the power. What did Peter say? He said, your heart is not right. Repent. He gave Simon opportunity to repent, which he didn't give to Ananias. Because between Ananias and Simon Magus, many years had passed, Peter had matured. So when you mature in the operation of gifts of the spirit, all the gifts will bring edification and building, not scattering and driving. I don't know if I'm teaching here. They will edify, they will build, not scatter, not destroy, not break people. So you have an account, but you will need to respond to that account. That's a word of knowledge. You have an account, but he doesn't tell you what to do. You have to know what to do. What do I do with what I know? What do I do? First Corinthians 14, 25. See what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. First Corinthians 14, 25. And those are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Now remember that when the man fall down, because you reveal something, when he fell down, he stood up born again. He is not falling down to receive Jesus. He is falling down in wonderment. Eh? Whoa. Wonderful. He has not yet received Christ. It is now left for the man who brought the revelation to take it a step further and teach him the gospel. So the signs are not an end in themselves. The signs are a pointer to the end. He will fall down and he will say, ah, that church, God is there. But he has not understood the gospel. Because a word of knowledge is an information granted to you to minister the word of God. So when you have a word of knowledge, you ask yourself the question, why do I have this knowledge? What am I to do with it? As a pastor, you don't talk about every information you get. As a pastor, when I'm talking about pastor, I'm talking about a person that is doing discipleship. It's not everything you see and it's not everything you perceive. It's not everything you hear you talk about. Sometimes as a pastor, when I'm coming here to teach you the word of God, in my heart, I already know what questions are in your heart. And some of you, as I'm coming to teach, I already know where you have situations. So in my message, by the aid of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the gifts of the spirit, by their aid, I'm able to structure my teaching in a way that the teaching will minister to you. 
And then sometimes you will hear people say, as if Papa knew what I was really going through. As if Papa understood that I really needed to hear this teaching. Yes, I knew you needed it because by the gift of the Spirit, I saw the needs in the congregation and I knew how to structure the teaching that will meet the needs. So the aid that the gifts of the Spirit gives us as pastors is to be able to know the needs in the congregation, the needs among my disciples, so I know what to say and sometimes it may not be the full message. How many of you understand? How many of you have observed that every time I come to teach, the first 20-30 minutes, I will teach something else and then arrive at what I want to teach. Have you observed that? Most times, that one I bring as introduction to the teaching has already solved many problems in the congregation. And I could come from any angle depending on what I perceive, or depending on what the gifts of the Spirit enable me to have revelation of. Teaching good. So every time you have a word of knowledge, you, you need to ask yourself, what am I to do with this? Jesus knew what to do with the word of knowledge. Listen carefully. The word of knowledge is not supposed to create curiosity in people's lives. And when God gives you a word, don't expand it. Don't expand it. If God gives you a word, say it and stop where it stopped. Stop where? Where it stopped. Don't expand it. And don't improve on it. You are praying for somebody and you hear tumor. Don't say, I perceive a tumor in the realm of the spirit. No, that's not what you heard. What you heard is a tumor, not in the realm of the spirit. Because a person may be having an issue with a tumor or he may be believing for somebody who has a tumor around him. Now, when you say, I, I perceive in the realm of the spirit, there's a tumor. That is no more the tumor that the spirit of God is showing. You perceive to conceive. Stay where the spirit stays. Stop where the spirit stops. Somebody's not shouting amen. amen. Somebody's not shouting amen. amen. I'm about to close. But let me give you this so you think about before we, uh, we connect tomorrow. That's what we call the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is the word Sophia's. It's used for several things. Write this down. The word Sophia's is used for intelligent, intelligence. It's used for skills. It's used for understanding. Intelligence, skills, understanding. It's used for an idea. An idea. And sometimes it is used for discovery. And in this teaching, we will hold on to discovery. A word of wisdom is an account of wisdom. That means a word of wisdom will deal with direction. It will be a word or words or phrases. A word or words or phrases that deals or points you to where to go or what to do. Where to go or what to do. While a word of knowledge gives you information, a word of wisdom gives you direction. While a word of knowledge gives you information, a word of wisdom gives you direction. It gives you what? Direction. Word of knowledge, information about the past or the present. Word of wisdom, instruction or direction about the future. Word of wisdom, solution, direction about the future. Word of knowledge, a fact about the past or the present. Word of wisdom, direction. You know, Jesus told them, go you over the village, you meet a place where two ways met. There's a donkey tied there. That's direction. Lose it and bring. If any man asks another direction, tell him the master is in need. Direction, direction, direction. Word of wisdom. So in a word of wisdom, you will have a future direction. Amen. 
I said amen. Everybody shout it very loud. A word of wisdom belongs to me. Say it again. The word of wisdom belongs to me. Say a word of knowledge belongs to me. The gifts of the spirit belongs to me. I will not be in the dark. I understand by knowledge the abilities that are on my inside. I didn't hear a good amen. Stand on your feet. That's all I got for you tonight. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Say with me the days of confusion are over. By the endowments of the spirit. I know what to do. About the next 50 years of my life. I know what to do. About the future. I have the abilities. The endowment. In my spirit. Right now. Say I know what to do. About situations. By the abilities. Of the Holy Spirit. On my inside. The gifts of the spirit. Are given to me. To profit with all. I will profit with the abilities on my inside in bringing solution, direction, instruction. I will make discoveries by the Spirit of God. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. A word of wisdom, discoveries, direction, instruction. Word of knowledge, a fact about the past or the present. Well, a word of wisdom, solution, direction, instruction about the future. That is why a word of wisdom is called the crown of revelation gifts. It's a crown. Because even if you don't have the fact, if you know what to do. Even if you don't know the facts, you don't have an information on the past and the present. But you know what to do. That's better. So, the, the a word of wisdom is called the crown of the gifts of the spirit. Just like prophecy is called the crown of all trans gifts. Am I teaching here? We will explore that reality tomorrow. Are you blessed? Glory. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, we rejoice that we are fully loaded. Endowed with the abilities of God on our inside. Your word comes with clarity. And we decree that your people are built up continually. And I declare tonight, whatever is not of God is rooted out. Rooted out. Rooted out. Rooted out. Zakunango do shekia. Bro nazo koloto baba baba. I speak to that threat. Somebody here is undergoing a threat. That threat is terminated. You are free from fear. That threat is terminated. Now I release you to experience the peace and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And suddenly you will see your way out. Suddenly. Just look, 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 look. Look, the way has been made already. Suddenly you just locate it and walk out of that place. You're delivered. Totally delivered. Totally delivered. Totally delivered. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you are blessed, healed, and totally liberated. In Jesus' name. And every believer says that amen like thunder. Amen. Can we celebrate God's word with a shout in the building tonight? That shout is not the kind of shout. We are wired to shout, we are wired to scream, we are wired to run. Glory! Let's take 30 seconds. Quickly look for somebody and, and fellowship with laughter. Fellowship with laughter. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! Ha <laughs> <laughs>
love some more and celebrate the victory. <laughs> glory! 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 <laughs> As you are laughing, the Lord is laughing. Those of you that are not laughing, the Lord is not laughing. <laughs> Glory! 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 Rejoice that your names are written. Your names are written in the book of life. Rejoice because you know what to do. Rejoice because you have solution. Oh, I feel like this thing. Glory, 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 glory. Hey! 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 Woo! Healing is flowing in this house. Healing is flowing in this house. Ay, 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 ay. There's somebody that has finished the second course of treatment and that situation is refusing to give way. Right now, healing has just hit that body. Oh, that body has been healed right now. Glory! Oh, Jaco da Baba. Oh, Jaco da Baba. Oh, Jaco da Baba. Glory to the Lamb. 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 Glory. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I want to take up your offerings wherever you're watching the service online, on television. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the banking leaders for you in another one or two minutes. But it's an honor and a joy to serve you the grace of God tonight. You have your offerings. I'd like you to lift them up. The banking leaders are on the screen. You can do yours online. And I want you to know that every time you give to this ministry, you enable us to get this gospel to the ends of the earth. And thank you for honoring Christ and honoring the labor of God's word through this house. Lift up your offerings, Father. We give in faith and we rejoice that our offerings are a sweet smell before you tonight. Thank you for the blessing upon your people. And I decree and declare right now that every need is met supernaturally. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says that, Amen, like thunder. Anywhere around the pulpit, you will bring your offerings and just drop them. Online, we're not signing you off or hooking up with Ask the Counselor right now. Hit the music. Let's do it as well.